The criminal lawyer, lawyer who frees guilty murderers and and rapists. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, he's a demon. He freeing all the demons. You feel me? It's crazy. It's all for the money, on though. It's all for that money, on. It's crazy though. We gonna see what's going on, chat. Sub to the channel if you're gonna try and get 2K for the B day. What's going on, man? Why is he freeing the criminals? Keep them in there. That suit that they've committed murder? Yeah. <laughs> what if you had a client that went on to commit mass murder? And then they call me. <laughs> yeah, we'll oh, we don't care about nothing. I was charged with assault on a family member. Assault, buying a girl, threatening to kill her, and they should expose your plan with my dump in front of a lady. Okay, uh, okay, I believe you did it. And uh, how much prison time are you looking at? 10 years, bro. 10 years. 20 years for each prescription. So that's over 100 years. And why am I. Damn! Oh, yeah, you're, you're the man, man. Miss Lawyer. You got my case this morning. This is Jay Oma, a criminal defense attorney keeping supervillains accused of the worst crimes imaginable out of prison and back onto the streets. Yo, of yo, he's the guy. Houston, Texas. Man, you got my case this You got my case this Case this Three counts of murder? Back. I saw them the pregnant person. Pregnant woman. Ain't no way. You do not let him go. Anybody can be charged with that. You can be charged with that. Um, what were you charged with? Terroristic threat. Terroristic threat? All right, so, um, you know, you're looking up to 20 years in prison on this case. But how does he manage to keep all of these alleged criminals out of jail? And why does he fight every day to protect these people in the court of law? Dude, what are you doing back here? I don't know, man. I don't know if a do this to my head, like, and she poked me in my head. Can I really give her like a three piece? I'm talking about toes and there's nothing wrong with defending your It sounds like self-defense. <laughs> <laughs> Does he get a sick pleasure out of winning? It sounds like self-defense. The impossible cases? Yo. Or is Jayoma fighting for something greater? The last 25 years of his life, much of it in prison, has all led up to this moment. The state of Texas versus Daniel Villegas. Number 940D09328. Oh, Verdict form B. We, the jury, find the defendant Daniel Villegas not guilty of. I'm an innocent man, Your Honor, and I have always been an innocent man. A grown man cry is different from like a fake cry. It's really like he's looking at 20 years. The attorney that I was with, the first thing he said was, don't kill yourself. Oh. And then I uh, see every person who comes across my table is. Uh, a person needs help. Yeah, don't snitch on yourself. Do not snitch on yourself. I headed to uh, the Houston to meet. Jay so he's yeah, he's telling them. Jay Oma, he's the smarter, man. Court, bustling with alleged criminals and their attorneys. He's your Pleasure to meet you, man. Pleasure to meet you too. He's yeah. the best lawyer. Jay Oma. <laughs> he's a super villain lawyer. So we're just gonna shadow you, see how this plays out. Are we gonna just follow you along? That's fine. Dude, Where would you? We're not needed, you boy. It's assigned like ten different cases per day. How does this work? You know, um, I agreed to jump onto these cases, and whenever I try to jump on these cases, I try to kill. I love what I do, so it's never some type of work to me. This is all fun. All right, what do we got? All right, so you know you're charged with possession of a controlled substance, uh, four grams to two hundred grams, right? Yes, sir. All right, so um, you know you're looking up to twenty years in prison on this case. Allegations are that you had a girlfriend and that um, you punched her three times when she told you to exit. Not only that, but the cops said that they saw bruises on her left eye, they saw blood all over her face, and lip lacerations. So what I want to tell you is there's no cameras in this sh right? Nobody's recording this, right? right? Right to your recollection, nobody's recording it. There's no other witnesses, right? It's her word against your word, right? Okay, so you know what really happened? She attacked you. She's being accused of theft. Hey, yo, he's crazy. He's switching. Hey, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Is I I don't know how to feel about that. Um, I mean, clock his ass off. Six months in Harris County Jail and the two thousand dollars fine. If the prosecutors are successful, that's what could happen to you. So my job is to try to prevent that from happening. So they're accusing you of stealing from Target. They're saying that you was taking some shit. Okay. Yeah. All right. So don't say anything. <laughs> but they're just accusing you. Of yeah. That's all it is. Dre, you know you, you had two charges with me, right? The first charge is felony possession of a weapon, and you were looking at 20 years in prison for that case. You know that, yeah. right? And then the other one is theft of about between 2,500 to 30,000. You're looking at 10 years in prison for that case. When you contact me, you were looking at what? Uh, 30 years. Possession of marijuana. Since this is Texas, all right? Possession of marijuana. Oh, bro, he gonna save that man. Save him. 
I don't know about the theft, but the gunman, he probably was just protecting himself. Yeah. That ain't nothing. Two to four ounces, so you're looking up to uh, one year. And here's County Jail on a $4,000 fine. So tell me what happened on that. Like, how did cops get to it? We are just chilling. All right. right. 13 people probably. Oh, I got the mic in my I'm face. Chilling outside. Yeah, I'm, I, me, personally, me, I'm sitting down eating, eating the plate, actually. Then they pull up by the cops. Like, yeah, cop cars did. Okay. They, all, they all get out and start grabbing people. I didn't move, I didn't run, I didn't do nothing. I'm thinking I have nothing on me, so I didn't move, I didn't do nothing. So I'm sitting there eating. Boom. Do everybody else, they running, everybody else, they doing this. I'm still, I'm, I'm still eating. Then, like, they had told me to get up. And when they told me to get up, like, they just, Automatically, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Put me in behind handcuffs. Right. And How about this? Where were, the, where were the weed at? Where were the weed at? Yeah, allegedly. Everybody threw their weed, so mm -hmm. like. Did they find any weed on your body? No, nah, none on my body. So they're saying that there's some weed that was around you and saying it was you? Yeah, basically. Okay. Listen to me. None of that weed was yours. They're saying that you <laughs> was in the car. Look, I'm break the ice. None and of that was yours, They said that the cop came up to you and they took you out of the car and you smelled like alcohol. The cop immediately started searching your pockets. They never asked for your consent, right? Never did, right? And I don't believe they even had a warrant to even check your pockets. Does that make sense? So that means the cop went in there. Wait, just hold, on, hold on, I need a warrant to check his pockets? I need a warrant to check somebody's po Sometimes police officers obtain arrest warrants for the sole purpose of questioning an individual they believe was involved in crime. So you gotta have a warrant to go in his pockets, apparently, to this man. He could be right. You're a lawyer, so you know way more than me, buddy. Himself. About that life. to me is illegal. And what did they do? They uncovered in your front left pocket a white bag. All right, and that white bag came back to be cocaine. Now I know in reality it's cocaine, okay? However, the way that the cops got to that was illegal. Um, there's something that I can try to follow in your case, uh, something called the motion to suppress, to try to suppress those drugs being, from being used against you. If I can make those drugs go away in the courtroom, then this case should be dropped. So the deal that they have right now is, <laughs> it's funny. The deal that they have right now is to dismiss the drug case, the one that you're looking at 20 years, if you just take a plea on the DWI, all right? So I, it's a good deal already, and I think it's because of my name. I want to make sure that you know that I... Hey, yo, take that deal. I don't want to hear you play no games. I don't want to hear you saying you're going to fight this shit. I don't want to hear you say nothing. 20 years? You better take it. I don't want to hear you thinking twice about nothing. Like, I don't want to hear you say, no, but I was, I, I, I got to fight for what's right. Nigga, take it. What? Don't be, don't be one of them. I don't care about you. I don't care about the court. I don't care about don't the be judge. One I don't care about the prosecutor. I don't care about witnesses. All I care about is you. All right, so let me tell you. Uh, you're charged with assault fan member, okay? That means you're looking at up to a year in Harris County Jail and a $4,000 fine if the prosecutors are successful in convicting you. Not oh, only you got to pay the money, too? Conviction. Um, it could make it hard. Hold on, after you go to jail, you still gotta pay money? Chat, let me know. For you to get a job, or it can interfere with your custody if you have kids. Appreciate if you, you get any other future criminal charges, it may increase your punishment. It's very important that I fight this case. She attacked you. You know why she attacked you? It's because you're all in a loving, hating relationship, and she decided to punch you. In self-defense, you threw a punch at her. Does that make sense? I mean, just because you're a man, you had to do whatever you can to stop the threat. She was the threat. And I want you to put that in your head. It was self-defense. You acted in self-defense. We're going to reset your case to a different date so I can get the evidence. And then I can really work that shit. What are you thinking about this case? What really hey, yo, he really like really what he's doing, though. You can see how happy he is about it, though. He like he really like fighting these cases, though. He found the passion for show that. For well, that happened. She didn't steal. That's all it is. She didn't steal. So I want to tell you that I got your felon in possession weapon yeah, dismissed. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh. You're not looking no, at 20 no, years no. anymore. Right. 20 years is gone. Right. All right, now we got one more. Yeah, and then so I told you about the other one, right? Yeah. Prosecutors are being a about this, right? Yeah. And they want to sit it for trial, and I said, oh, yeah, let's sit it for trial. And they know what's up. The allegations are this girl is saying that you stole her car, right? That car was like $21,000. And she's saying that you said you were going to bring it back, right? These are all her words. And then about a month later, the car got into a crash, and you were nowhere near that, all right? You were never driving that car. No, never, you know not she, at all. Yeah, she's making this up. Right. You know, because she don't want to pay that She owes. And these prosecutors should know what I'm going to do. The judge also knows, too, because she looked at it. She goes, yeah. oh, we can do this in one day. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready for that. I know you is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He ready to go to court. He ready. He got all his all his evidence up there, bro. You do not want to battle this man in the court of law. He's a monster. Look at the smile of him. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Before I stepped into your case, the offer was three years. Three years. For you to go to prison. Yeah. That was the offer. And I've never been and to now, prison. Since you hired me, 
I got one of them dismissed. Right. And the other one's on the way to get dismissed too. Cause you know I'm gonna do in trial, right? What are you gonna do? Fucking, oh yeah, Mike Tyson then. Yeah, yeah, Mike Tyson. Oh damn. Well, I'll okay? be you know nice. me? It was never on your body. Never you were just body. eating. Never. Sounds good. He's the best lawyer in the world, chat. That marijuana at all. That's, uh, and you shouldn't be going to jail for something that other people do around you. That makes sense. It is not a crime to hang around with people. Right. So we think this is an easy dismissal or what? Yeah. The weed's a crime in Texas? Weed is, yeah, having possession of marijuana, yeah. Oh. In Texas. I don't even know that. <laughs> but I mean, luckily you don't even smoke. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> it's going through your head Bro, right now. Just Man, it's a lot of emotions, game. but I already know I got Jay on my right by my side. Like, I feel like I feel much more better and comfortable. Real quick, who's the best lawyer? Hey, hold on. Hey, you talk about you feel more comfortable. Are you taking it to trial? He the dude chase who facing 20 years for the drugs or just take the plea deal for DUI. He's the person who just got to take the DUI. But he, I think he's going to fight it. Or some access, man. I'm a man. Jay, I'm the best lawyer. Alan? I'm, I'm hoping for you, man. What's going through your head but right he now? Is fine. Actually, going through my head right now is that what he actually said is actually the absolute truth. You got a good lawyer. Yes. I'm to let you know that. Let's go back in there. Ah, uh, Jamal could get a job in creative fiction. That was crazy. Yeah, he, he made all that. that. Ass. <laughs> From punching his girl three times in the head allegedly to she attacked him. He needed to eliminate the threat. You can't make this stuff up, man. All right, D. Who's the best lawyer? And why am I the best lawyer? Mike Tyson, what are you going to beat the case up? Before you hired Jailma, did you think you were going to go to jail for 50 years? They, they they was like, there's no way I'm not going to prison. What do you think the value of what Jailma did with your case here was? Yeah, freedom is priceless. Like, this lively, my livelihood, so I take that real. That's days I'm missing. You got a family? Yeah, kids, a lot of them. I'm, I'm a real hands-on person. I'm in my kids' life, so it's like... They trying to take take that away from you, sure. so ain't no money in the world to change that. Congratulations, Trey. Good work, man. How much do you think yeah. they paid him, though? 50 dollars All right, this is your ticket showing that you're done. All right? For both? 20 years. No, the other one's set for trial. Ooh. Looks good? Sure, yeah, no problem. No problem. Go do what you got to do, and then call me. Wow. What just happened? Three dismissals today. Hey, he looks happy. Yeah, yeah. He's very, very happy. Very he's, he's a free man. All right, so we approached the judge. You got bond conditions. Mm -hmm. um, look at me. I'm going to kill this case. <laughs> all, right. all right, so you're about to go get drug tested. If they test you today, you're gonna test positive for any drugs? Positive? Yeah. No. Are you gonna, sure? If you test positive for weed or any other type of drugs, the reason why you're testing positive is because you're around people who do that. Right. And then because of secondhand inhalation, it's in your system. Okay, okay, let them cook. I thought you would, hey, I, I thought you were finna go on the, I thought you were finna go on the other side for a second, but you, you swung back over here. I like that. I like that. I like that. Use a good, use the good one. Man. You almost had me. And um, hey, with 12, if someone catches second. weed in your system, where did that come from? A secondhand smoke. So is this an average day? Average day. Yeah. Average day. Yeah. Yeah. And these are grinders. In Harris County. Jayoma was grinding his balls off, going from case to case. He's making case that money, that guapo. Door by door by door. Client wants to take a plea deal. And this kind of hurts you a little bit. It hurts me because. You think you get a better deal? Oh, no. I think I can get this case dismissed, but. Oh. Yeah. No, I watched the video, dude. I watched the video. You put a crack pipe in your pocket. The dude, the cop stopped you. And then when he stopped you, you were resisting a little bit of arrest at the time he was putting you in handcuffs. Why did he come back and bust a U-turn then? Because he can do that. Cops can do that. <laughs> but he went and bust another U-turn. Yeah, they can do that. Cops can do 10 U-turns if they want to. When I told him I was already going home. It don't matter. That, home. No. God dang. So you got people like that who hard-headed with their lawyers like, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, bro. No, nah, they got me on video. I did it. I did it. I did it, bro. Hold on. Wait a minute. You his lawyer. Why are you being on some shifty activity wearing a mic? We're not going to skip the fact that this is a YouTube video. But you're wearing a mic while you're taking some cases? Bro is admitting everything in the room right now. And you just catching it in 4K for the content? Nigga, you code. Like, that's some code activity. Like, on some pause the, pause the content. Hop out the room and be brought, like, catch the favor, dude, and your lawyer. They setting you up. They got some shiesty activities going on. Bro, I need shiesty for taking the case.
Then you put a crack pipe in your pocket and they find you with drugs in your pocket. The fuck? While JMO is getting a case dismissed, to my surprise, I met this nice young man outside. Um, what were you charged with? Terroristic threat. Terroristic threat? Against President Biden? No. <laughs> what, what is the charge? Nice uh, man. Two girls. Okay. Like, or I'm gonna blow your house up or? It was Something a like shooting that. threat. Okay. Um, well, uh, what were you, did it, how did it play out? Well, I'm still in court right now. Um, I imagine, obviously, that was like an empty threat. Yes. Allegedly, assuming it even happened. Allegedly. Yeah. Why, why is he looking at why, why Why didn't he blink yet? Why is it? Uh, allegedly. Bro didn't blink since you started. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I hope the best for you. Any kids watching, don't do terroristic threats. Bro, like, never. All right. <laughs> Alright, you go get him, kill it. Okay. Out. Look at that smile, you can't take that off. You don't get overwhelmed by the sheer quantity of cases? No, no, because it's all here. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, you have photographic memory? Uh, going down. I think so. But sadly, not everyone here at court today was as lucky to have someone like J. Elmo willing to attack their case, no matter oh, the allegations the or the overwhelming evidence going against them. How did it go? We met you at the security, and I just saw you pop out of court. Um, it went well. I am um, happy with what happened. I mean, I did what I was accused of, so I did. play guilty? I did, yes. Um, first offense, but everything works out the way it's supposed to. Okay. What were you accused of? Uh, it's something with a kid. It's something with a kid. It's something with a kid. DWI. Ah, okay. oh, no, my bad, sir. My bad. I was wrong. My bad. I was very sorry. Uh, it was a year ago, and I made some pretty bad decisions. So <laughs> my bad, man. Is nice. anyone watching? Um, just own up to what you did. I mean, it's so much easier if you just are honest. Yeah, don't snitch on yourself. <laughs> Do not snitch. <laughs> Fuck what he's saying. Don't listen to him. He already he already going to jail. He trying to send y'all with him. <laughs> he trying to get some roommates. In yourself. Nigga. Do, do you um, regret snitching? defending any of your clients? Never, 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 never. Because it's always an honor to do that. What if you had a client that went on to commit mass murder? Then they do that. Then they call me. <laughs> Okay, so you, have you ever had any moral dilemmas in your head of like, man, what if I release a super villain with some great, great defense? No, not at all. Uh, I see every person who comes across my table is um, a human. person who needs help. Okay. And I don't look at their personal issues, their religion, their, their past sins. They just need help, just like how a doctor helps somebody who needs knee surgery. I'm in for the kill right now. That's crazy. He smells blood in the water. That's crazy. He's he helped anybody. Not guilty though. right now. He will acquit. All right, we'll be at the window for now. Good luck, Alan. Let's All right, Alan's going in. Oh, I'm getting those shark eyes, man. He's ready. All right, is he bringing out his client? Who will win, the defense or the prosecutor? I'm going for Alan. Okay, it's looking good or no? How did it go? Fourth quarter post game interview. Tell me. All right, so Judge Granite it was that quick, and then now my client is oh, uh, damn, free to take off the interlock off his car. So what? Yeah. No, no, twenty years in prison. No, 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 definitely not. What? No, you no. did it just now? No, no. This is this is a different case. This is um, the DWI case. So he has a bond condition to keep a interlock on his car, which means he has to blow on it. Now I got it off, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. So Ooh. no felony has him now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He a goat because I I seen. I'm not saying, I, I mean, I've seen it before. So. I've seen a couple of them, chat. Mind your damn business. But I've seen a couple of them. Hey, look, though, chat. If you if you can't blow in that, I, I blowed in a couple of them for for some people, man, chat. We need to get to, we need to start driving. This car need to push. I'm feeling the answer for No, I'm All right, next case. You did it? I think so. Dude, hell yeah. Isn't that crazy? Okay. He's so fast. He's keep, he keeps going. Can we get a who's the best lawyer? All right, damn. Yeah. Hey, who's who's the best lawyer? Jamo. There we go. He knows you, man. Your right. fame goes far and wide. You're a, you're a celebrity lawyer now. Is <laughs> also lawyers. I am a lawyer. Yes. Are you a prosecutor yeah, or a defense lawyer? attorney? Defense attorney. Okay. Yes. What defense is the best attorney? part about being a defense attorney? I get to help uh, innocent people every day. I'm saving their lives. I'm keeping them out of jail. Getting their case dismissed. Has anyone get ever one come case? to you and said like, I am guilty, but I don't want to go to jail? Yes. What All do you say time. to that? I say, don't tell anyone that. I got you. Okay. We're gonna fight for you. Or not. Don't t tell anyone you're guilty. What is one piece of advice um, for any criminal? Well, I think I want to be a lawyer now, chat. Just keep your mouth shut. Turns out most good this is lying to people. attorneys think like this. I think I'm this good at lying. Prosecutor brought up an interesting point. I think people fail to understand that we're not for crime. 
Okay, we're for upholding the Constitution. Sure. And so this has only been um, my first year since I've been a criminal defense attorney. And I can tell you it's opened my mind and my eyes to a lot of things that prior other defense attorneys who I've worked with would tell me. Um, and so I think it's very important because we are responsible for protecting the Constitution. Sure. And so, again, we, are, we don't like crime, but what we do want to make sure is that each individual is represented fairly. I've seen many times people's constitutional rights violated. Sure. And so it brings me a lot of joy when I'm able to point those things out and I'm able to get certain cases dismissed. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, Felicia. Not by right now. <laughs> no, Bree, not a yes. I got you. Do you have any Make thoughts about Jelma? Jelma's uh, one of the best young attorneys, promising, upcoming lawyers that I've met in a okay. long time. Yes. You got to make up a name. Right why do you think that is, Jelma? Um, well, I'm relentless. Yes, he's like a shark. <laughs> Once he smells the scent, he does not get off. You go for blood? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Straight for the jugular? Straight for the jugular. All the time. Okay. Do you have any enemies in this courtroom? Uh, no enemies. I'm just opponents. My opponents, I'm talking prosecutors. Those who are trying to prove the criminals are guilty beyond a reasonable doubt and lock them up in prison. Let's talk to some. All right, I'm here with? Jonathan Ortiz. Okay, you went to law school with Jaoma. Yes, I did. And you're a prosecuting attorney? Yes, sir. A prosecutor? Yes, sir. What is the best thing about being a prosecutor? It's really helping out the, our complainants, right? It's just being there for them, helping them out, making sure that justice is done. Uh, make sure that you consider, you know, the defendants, complainant, the community. I mean, it's just, it's good work. Do you like the fact that you can put criminals with evidence behind bars? I mean, it's it's never, I mean, it's not like I like to enjoy doing it, right? I just. I mean, you could. Hey, there's no wrong answer here. I'm yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we it's, it's ask, never good to put to prison, right? Well, I mean, unless they're like a serial rapist or murderer. Yeah, I mean, you're a prosecuting attorney? Yes. What's the most interesting case you've done? Oh, wow. Well, I just do assault family members, and it's always very interesting when the complainant actually wants to testify. Most of them don't. So one of mine came in, and she was very lively, and that ended up making us not win the case because she wasn't very likable. But it's a shame because she was assaulted. Interesting. I guess. Oh, she was on some. Nah, he right there. That man right there. He did it right there. I'm going to be his. I mean, that was she was on type shit, and it fucked up the case. And now you lost. And now he's walking the streets freely because you can't stay civilized for three minutes. Oh, no, no, that shit probably long as shit. No, no, I don't be watching no judge videos. What are the biggest flaws in the legal system, if any, from your perspective? Just too many cases, not enough time, and yeah, we're just really overworked. Yeah. It's a safe place to give me an answer, honestly. No, no, I understand. And sometimes, I mean, it does. It does feel good, okay. depending on the type of crime, but I mean, still, it's somebody's life, right? You have to consider that as well. Um, but yeah, when, when the time is right, I mean, it is, it is right to send him to prison. Okay. Do you think jail was like the real life Better Call Saul? Um. But Asian? Huh, I'll have to think God. about that. Yeah, hey, you got some good be. Oh, there he is. Uh, it's just, it's like a chess game, like me and you playing a chess game. That's all it is. Okay. There's nothing crazy about that. And afterwards, good. we shake hands. Got it. Right, they That's have a not job. personal. No, no. But sometimes it has to get personal. Um, I've seen it where it can get personal, but to me, I feel like that's a waste of time. Has anyone ever confessed to you that they've committed murder? Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean... Allegedly, of course. Allegedly, but it's like... It's not they weren't in the right state of mind. Hold on, whoa! I imagine that. Head on! Like curiosity. If you admitted murder, how is that allegedly? What? Hold on. Sorry, I think you got it mixed around. Hold on was peaked. What drives Jaoma to fight to keep the bad guys out of jail versus <laughs> in jail? So tell me, once you became an attorney, how did you decide to become a defense attorney versus a prosecutor? Um, so I was interning for a DA's office and I was able to see the other side and how they just lock people up and you know I said oh I can do this. You know, I, can, I can lock everybody up. That's, that's my number one goal because I like to win. Um, and then one of the defense attorneys said hey just come see our side for a little bit. I said, all right, I have no problem with that. You know, I'm curious. Sure. So I went to go see a trial, and there was a guy who was charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, the deadly weapon being a car. Okay. And they're alleging that he tried to run over uh, his wife uh, with that vehicle. Yeah, I, I went through the whole trial. It was a three-day trial. Uh, they found him guilty. And so it was hurtful because I was speaking to him just like I'm speaking to you. Yeah. And it was just normal stuff. How you know where? You know, we're cordial, we're fine, we're joking around. And it's really like, he's looking at 20 years. He was arguing, uh, I found him guilty, and the client started crying. And so that touched me the first time. And the second time is, um, 
they had the deputies came around him. There's three of them surrounding him, treated him like property. He was no longer like cool anymore. Put your hands behind your back. Um, you're coming with us, and he's just sobbing. And so a grown man cry is different from like a fake cry. So then we went to go visit him at the jail. Yeah. And um, yeah, a man ain't gonna fake no cry. So, I ain't never seen a man fake a cry. Like we ain't gonna fake no tears. Shout out, we crying for real. First thing uh -huh. he said was, don't kill yourself. Uh -huh. And then the guy looked him in the face, looked me in the face, and he just sobbed, and he was like, and he gave this impression that I might as well just do it. Because he was, I think, 45 at the time. So that's pretty much his whole life, right? 45? Sure. God damn. That later on, that there was a retrial that was granted because uh, one of the prosecutors withheld evidence. So and that, crooked. Yeah, okay. yeah. And that, was, that lazy, evidence though. was uh, a recording of the girl saying, if you don't pay for my shit or do what I want you to do, I'm going to make up this lie and you're gonna pay for it. And so the whole system went through and he was found guilty, but he didn't do it. And that evidence would have helped his trial. So if he had a better defense attorney, his life wouldn't have been ruined. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So that's why I fight for all the evidence that's out there because it's really important. If you don't get that, that guy was looking at 20 years. Um, and then now he's Damn. free and walking. They be trying so to put people in jail so easy. Oh my God, you were just about to go 20 years and then you're out. So that touched me and I said, you know what? There's more people vulnerable in this world, and I need to put all my talents and my effort into protecting the public. So that's why I became a defense attorney. He almost saw his clients the same way as a doctor would someone with an injury. He was here to help them, regardless of what their alleged crime was. And while it's easy to morally criticize his work for some of the viral supervillains that Jayoma helped free back onto the streets, some are just young dudes on the bad side of an outdated law, like this guy charged with allegedly possessing marijuana. What's going on, man? Good. Yeah, I don't think he did it. Good. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have some bad news today. Pray for me, Nana. Pray for him. I love you too. What's going through your head right now? I don't know. Okay. Nervous. <laughs> okay. What do you think the chances of your case being dismissed are? Highly chances, no probable cause. So okay. Okay. I should be good, probably. I don't know though. Okay. We're gonna see if we find out right now. All right, we're about to find out. All right, Jamar. You doing good? Yeah, I'm good. You remember the last thing I told you? When I left? Yeah, yeah. my case going to be Yeah, so I'm get this case dismissed. So let me tell you, I got this dismissed. <laughs> Dude, I got this shit dismissed. <laughs> Easy, this case. on your case. Why did I do that? Because I, I love this job. And not only that, but it's my way to give back. You know why it was dismissed? Yeah. My name is on this case. So that's the reputation that I build for myself, is that I always try to make an example of each case so then everybody can see what I do and what can happen to your case if you don't dismiss it. So oftentimes it kind of gives a message to any prosecutor out there that if my name is on the case, yeah. just don't f*** with it. Just, yeah. Hey, Jayoma, can you do the thing? He said just don't f*** with it. Jayoma. He got waves. Is she, is she gonna be hyped? Yeah, she's gonna be hyped. All right, let's go. Yeah, she's gonna be hyped. She's gonna be hyped. All right, we, we gotta get this. She's gonna have to me right now. <laughs> what do you think she's gonna say? Oh, no. She's gonna be hyped, right? She should be. She should. We have some bad news. <laughs> tell, her, tell her what happened. Bro, my kids got dismissed, bro. What? <laughs> What's going through your head? Yeah, I'm happy. I'm excited. Okay. Are you guys going to celebrate after this? Yeah, we're going to celebrate. We're going to have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, damn. <laughs> I don't think he was ready for that one. She. Damn, so he ain't going to jail that day. He got to have a baby. Yo, I'm happy. With one young dude freed from his weed charges, Jayoma and I walked to the local prison to check in on one of his clients waiting to hear an update from him. At that moment, I realized Jayoma was married to the game. And Jayoma, how often do you come here? I see this on your story all the time. Uh, I come here as often as I can. Uh, whenever I have some updates from my clients who are in the jail, then I come here and give them an update. So then I can do whatever I can to just make sure that they know I'm here and I'm not leaving. You're kind of doing this as like a psychological, emotional check-in on these people. Yeah, yeah, because... Like, you're not alone. I'm here for you. We're going to figure this out. You're not alone. Um, your family hired me to be here, so I'm here. And I want to make sure you get an update of everything that I'm doing in the case and then what the, the progress of that case. Let's see you go in there. They know you by name? Yes. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah, this case Global got lawyer, Will you take a call me. anywhere, anytime? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Shot. So it doesn't matter to me because people need me. So what if you're getting freaky with a, a 10 out of 10? Yeah, the freaky... I think I'll still take that call. Actually? Yeah, I really would. You don't watch any, um, like, Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad? No, 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 no. Just some random things that are just, you know, day by day. And there's some video games, too. So what do you play? Uh, Red Dead Redemption. 
and then Grand Theft Auto 6 I should be should be coming out and I'm excited for that Ooh. so if they can only put me in there as an attorney Ooh. in GTA 6 I'll be down for it you don't have to pay me hey Rockstar if you're watching this put Jayoma in the game yeah that would be a sweet That'd lawyer be crazy yeah. I bet you that actually is possible. Yeah, that would be hard, bro. I ain't gonna cap. He, every time you get in the jail, you be like, you gotta go to jail, and then a lawyer right there, and he the lawyer every time he get every, every case dismissed, he's gotta pay him the right amount of money. That'd so I'm sweet. here with? Yay me. Yay me. Okay. Where are we at right now? Um, Harris County Jail. Uh, why are we here? Um, I'm here visiting my husband, and so is Jayoma. Okay. And what is Jayoma in relation to your husband? He's representing him. Okay. Does this experience have affected you, having your loved one in jail? Uh, very hard. Just, yeah. um, you know, he's been there for six months, so just okay. dealing with, you know, life to life, um, it's, it's been really hard. Okay. And Jayoma, what are your thoughts on dismissing the case? Do you think it's possible? No, no, it's really it dismissed. Okay. So it's ironic that I ran into her because okay. I'm going to go visit him, visit him today. So. Okay. Yeah. You have faith in this guy? Yes. How important is this information you're about to bring to your client? Oh, it's very important. The charge is um, it's involving children, so I can't talk about the charge, but it's pretty, pretty bad, bad, crazy accusations. So I want to make sure that, you know, I'm not, I'm not leaving them. Yeah. I'm here. And yeah, uh, I have to make sure that the truth is shown. That's your job. Yeah. All right, so <clears throat> Jayoma, go get him. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. One man versus the entire criminal justice system. But while Jayoma is casually dismissing some of the worst charges imaginable, you have to wonder how Jayoma became Jayoma. All right, Jayoma, where are we in front of right now? We are in front of South Texas College of Law. This is the oldest law school in Houston? It is. What led you to come here? Well, he when I first old. started, I grew up in Ailey, Texas. Went to Ailey Hastings High School, which you guys will see later. And then from there, I went to Houston Community College to be a nurse. So I was a nurse for a good amount of time in my life. And then from then, I decided I wanted to become a lawyer. And I stumbled upon South Texas College of Law. And real quick, what took you from being a nurse to wanting to become a lawyer? Uh, the winning aspect. So being a nurse, you don't really have an opponent. You don't have like a thing that you can win. There's no moving t target. You have a disease, you just treat it with antibiotics or whatever it needs to be done. And it was very boring. And what I did enjoy about sports was there's always one winner and one loser. And I was thinking, what kind of career can I get to be fulfilled in that type of aspect? And that's uh. what I thought about law. I, I don't know, like doctors, I like the way he, so they treated me bad. And did you I like the way he just, how the way he just put it, like, the way he just named it, like, bro, he just, he put it in a good word form, bro. I, I, I understood everything. <laughs> I'm gonna write that back, because I understood everything he said. A nurse wanting to become a lawyer. He uh, said, the nah. Aspect. So being a nurse, you don't really have an opponent. You don't have like a thing that you can win. There's no Facts. moving target. You have a disease, you just treat it with antibiotics or whatever it needs to be done. It was very boring. And what I did enjoy being about a sports nurse is boring. was always one winner and one loser. And I was thinking, what kind of career can I get to be fulfilled in that type of aspect? And that's when I thought about law. I didn't like doctors. So Bro, I'm thinking about being a lawyer. Bro, fuck it. Growing up as a kid, Bro. super competitive. I was very, very competitive. He yeah, beating their cases so track, easy, it's crazy. Uh, basketball. I was fat. I was 400 pounds. 400 pounds? 400 pounds. Yes. You That's me. No, I was playing offensive lineman. I'll send you pictures. <laughs> How did you lose 200 pounds? Uh, a lot of running and a lot of salads. This is never before heard Jayoma Malore. No. During the whole entire time, uh, I ended up working retail. I was getting paid $8 an hour, and all I cared about was uh, just trying to eat that day. To put it into perspective, I could only afford one bowl of Chipotle in a day, and I had to divide that into three. So the morning I eat one third, afternoon I eat one third, Bruh. and that was all I could eat. Oh, one meal? What? Ain't cake. He getting cake now, bro. He getting cake for being a lawyer. He worked at Walmart and becoming a lawyer is crazy. That's a big come up. Nigga worked at Walmart, now he a lawyer? I if mean, I looked down, I couldn't see my dick. That's how fat I was. How were you running four minute miles if you were four well, That's pounds? not what we ended hey, off at. Just because you're a big guy doesn't mean you're slow. <laughs> no <laughs> way. Yeah, I'm knocking people out. Like So just like this mentality is transferred over to the court. Yeah. You have to be aggressive. Kill or be killed. There you go. I went here from Oh, he's a good lawyer. I ain't gonna count. I believe to 2017 winter. You came in here with tattered clothes and a hole in your shoe, and you're like, damn, this better be worth it? Yeah, yeah. So I remember studying my butt off. I'm 100% of a student. I'm living off my savings, and no money's coming in. And I remember it was rainy, it was cold. I was wearing tattered clothing, and I recall uh, leaving the building, coming right around this corner, 
and just saying it better be fucking worth it because life sucks so bad right now. And did you think that's crazy? That he made his story sweet. It's on some what what's called Wolf of Wall Street. I never watched that movie, but I know it's about this. Go on to achieve this what's dream that? of owning a practice and it being this successful. I did it. I hundred percent believe. My hey, what's the Wolf of Wall Street about? I heard about it, but I just never took my time out to watch it. Myself that I would do it. It was just how we're gonna get it done. That's where the whole story comes through right after law school. Did you have natural talent for law? I would say that I was very nervous for public speaking. As of right now, for me to even speak in front of a judge would make me well back then it would make me tremble. Do you think the average person gives up on their dreams right when they're about to achieve them? Yes, yes. So I say just keep going. I chose this law school because it had a reputation of being a killer in the courtroom and I always thought that nobody would respect you as an attorney or your legal threats if you can't back it up going to trial and I learned a lot from the uh, the law school and the, the training at trial after seeing the law school jail my grinded to barely be able to afford we headed over to Bissonette Street near the That's apartment sweet. jail I grew up in like 10 drug dealers behind me right now this is the red light district known for prostitution they almost God damn. the trap out here all right, we're in Bissonette, also known as the Blade, the red light district here in okay. Houston. Jailma, you grew up here? I did, Court Glen, 9700. That's where <laughs> I grew up, right down these streets. This place is no joke. I used to run around here all the time. How you doing, man? What's all doing? Oh, hey, we're all just doing a little documentary of Jailma. He's a criminal. Oh, I do. But get your little skinny ass on, man. Gonna come over here talking about what y'all own. Man, punch this man in the chest, man. Criminal defense. You see my face before? Oh. And I grew up here. No, 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 I'm an attorney. I help, pe I help people who are charged. Yeah. If you get charged with a crime, I got your back. Yeah. I don't work for the cops. No, fuck that. I help people who get charged with a crime. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you got any cases, you I got you. All right, let me get my card. I, I grew up here, right down over there. All right, I got you, I got you, I got you. You better think about, you better think about it, bro. He just, he just, he, hey. Hey, hey, bro, you better, you better put that number, save it right now. You might need that later. Sorry. Um, and he gonna clutch it. So a lot of people no matter what you do. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, he gonna really clutch poor, it. But you know, you had a lot of friends, and we'd always get into stupid trouble. We'd do stupid. Sh uh, that's just being a kid. And then, uh, good thing that we didn't get any charges, but it was close. We're kind of in the trenches right now. I like how he yeah, wasn't scared though at all okay, so because it was his block. It's his neighborhood. He wasn't scared of nothing. He was scared, but well, nah, he wasn't scared. He was on ten too. But bro would not back up at all. Cool. I like that. I did. Block. Were you a villain so, back then? Uh, I guess you could say that. So this is wait. when you were a tank, and this is when you were taking people's food, too? Yeah, yeah. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much of a menace were you? I wasn't that bad. I would say like probably like a 5 or 6. Did you get girls back then? No, no. Nobody wants somebody who's 400 pounds. Do you think without football, you would have ended up um, as one of the clients that you defend? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then there was actually a heartbreak story when it comes to that. No. Tell me more. All right, so I believe one of the first girlfriends I had broke my heart. I was <laughs> It always starts off with the first heartbreak. And um, I was dating her for a couple of times. All of a sudden, after about, I don't know, two months, cold turkey just dropped dead, stopped talking to me. And didn't pick up my phone calls, and I was worried. I thought something happened to her. And then I kept calling like two days later. Then um, her friend called me and said, hey, this person doesn't want to talk to you anymore. And I said, why? Right, she owes me an explanation. So then I got her to come out, and this is after nursing. And she said, um, what? What do you want? I want to know what's going on. Like, wh why did you just stop talking? Because that's rude. And uh, she said, um, you know, she got a new guy. And she said this. She, she looked at me dead in the eye, and she goes, "You're a nurse. He's a, he's a stockbroker." And that's so exactly. You're poor and you're not cool. Yeah, pretty much. Damn. And that stuck with me to this day. You're a nurse. He's a stockbroker. I literally remember it every time I do things in my life, and it actually motivates me. Whether it be poverty, obesity, or heartbreak. A common theme in Jayoma's life is him relentlessly attacking and killing any obstacle that's ever gotten in his way and creating possibilities seemingly out of thin air to achieve his dreams. But he didn't get here without getting his hands a little dirty. How do you dress when you're not in a suit? I've never seen you in anything but a suit. Are oh, you about to see it tonight? Actually? Yeah. I'm not going to wear a suit tonight. Why would I wear a suit tonight? Well, where are we going tonight? We're going to go to a place that uh, I used to dance at at one time, and uh, it's going to be a fun experience. Things are about to get freaky. I don't even know what to What do you mean by that? Expect. No. Bruh. Are you getting I used to be a male stripper over here. Bruh. 
This is one of the best. Hey, yo, this man did everything. He used to be a male stripper. He used to be a nurse. He used to be a lawyer. He used to be a Walmart associate. Bro, he, bro he's everything. He's completing all the stuff that we have going on in Houston, Texas. And your job as a male stripper funded your entire law firm? The entire law firm from having zero to having what I have now. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this place, this opportunity, the community, and Tony the man himself. And how long were you a male stripper? For about two years. Those two years were rough. I'd come here at nighttime, <laughs> and in the mornings I'd be in court. Warrior by day, dancer by night. And look who we have, Tony. Tony! Hey! Tony, who are you? My name is Tony Vaccaro. Can I take you for a walk? Let's go. Okay. All right, let's go. All right, Jayoma, how long have you guys known each other? Since I started here. Two okay. Years. Yeah, I was for two years. How was this guy? Beautiful! Beautiful? Can we hey, Tony on some, on some, on some nice shit. You see some moves tonight? No, no moves. No, no. no. <laughs> you did this to fund your dream, and Tony was your supporter. Like he, uh, he allowed me to come dance here, introduce me to the staff. And, and hey, yo, he on some freaks. Hey, yo, he's not working. Everybody has been so welcoming. Did you think your dream would take you to being a male stripper to fund that dream? No. Did you think you would come here to make that dream a reality? I didn't know that. All I knew, I was getting paid eight dollars an hour. It's hard to build a dream that way, especially if you're working forty hours or forty plus hours for retail. So here was just a better opportunity, and I only had to work maybe three days, two days. A week. What did your girlfriend think about you being a full male time stripper and lawyer? You never told her. We broke up. We broke up because uh, of this? Yeah, she because of this. And it was her idea. All right, we got to see you take a shot. Oh, you're taking a doubler right there. That's a tripler. All right, I'll take one. Let's go. Tony, have you missed this guy? Yes. Yeah. Was he good stuff? Yes. We have rules. One of them is to use this as a stepping stone. Okay. Do you think that's what he did? <laughs> All right, two opportunities and Tony, and thank you so much for everything. Two opportunities and Tony. How was Jayoma as a dancer? I know you're a good dancer from what I hear. He was the one that, on the best right here. Actually? Yeah. You're not just saying this because we have an iPhone. No, 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 no. He was the one on the best here. How was this guy as a dancer? He needed work, but, you know, <laughs> I showed him a couple of moves, how to swing a thing. He was pretty good, man. He was entertaining because there, there is a competition right here, and everybody's in, in competition. Yeah, this guy made it. Made it like a muffin. Seems like Jayoma can succeed in whatever he puts his mind. Nigga, okay, okay. I'm gonna let you do you, buddy. We're gonna let 